So welcome to this session and we will be uh, talking about network security, uh, we will do a recap of what we had done in the uh, information security level 3 course, <coughs> very quickly we will see and uh, we will uh, basically this recap will be oriented towards uh, understanding some of the threats uh, as we mentioned in the previous session, <coughs> as we saw in the previous session many of these threats there are two aspects to this one thing is that we need to protect it from not happening and if at all it happens then we need to have a log by which we prove what has happened and you know both legally and technically uh, what should be the remedy and uh, so there should be a trace of what has happened and we need to prove that uh, you know something wrong has happened. So one, so one is prevention and once an attack happens in spite of the prevention how are we going to basically address them. So all these, these, these two aspects we will now start looking at it from a network security perspective and also from a operating system perspective. Now <coughs> let us look at what are all the security features that are available today that are relevant to networking. Networking essentially here means that one computer gets connected to another computer. There are four important properties that one need to one any any system need to satisfy when they are communicating messages with each other. One the first one is confidentiality. See all of them in a very very broad sense and a very big view may appear to look the same, but there is very very subtle and very important difference between each that we are going to talk of here. The four bullet points that you see on this slide. First one is confidentiality. Here only sender and the intended receiver should understand the message content. Please under the confidentiality does not mean that I send a message nobody else should receive it, any number of people can receive it, I do not mind many people receiving it, but the person who can make sense out of it should be the intended receiver, please understand that very clearly. So confidentiality essentially means it is not that I send a message nobody else should receive it, anybody can receive it but nobody should understand except the intended receiver and how do we achieve this as a sender I encrypt that message meaning I jumble that message and <coughs> the receiver de-jumbles this message what we call as decrypting that message and basically they get the uh, we, we, we under exchange the message in this fashion. The other fellows who have got this message will not know how to de-jumble it or do not know how to decrypt it and so they will not understand what we both are talking. So this is what we mean by confidentiality. The second thing is authentication, here the sender and the receiver want to confirm identity of it, say you have alone sent it, it is not somebody else who is trying to send it to me, so that is what is called as authentication. So two people agree to send, two people are exchanging communication, when one fellow receives it, say B receives from A, right? B receives a message, he has to ensure that it is indeed sent by A and not somebody cloning or uh, acting like A. So that is uh, that comes under the second point what we call as authentication. The third point is message integrity, the sender receiver want to ensure that the message is not altered. I send a message, nothing should change in between, the receiver should get exactly that message. If he is not getting it something somebody has tampered it then he should know that somebody has tampered it, so that is called integrity. And the fourth important thing is access and availability. When we make a system where we can send these messages ensuring confidentiality, authentication and message integrity, but many times if this system will not be accessible or it will not be available, then there is no use. So I need to send, ACE needs to send message to be in such a way that he, he should be in a position to send it any time, that is what the four point say, fourth point says essentially access and availability. So I should be in a position to send the message at any point of time and by while sending this message I should maintain confidentiality in the sense that when I send a message intended for B, only B should be in a position to understand what I have sent and the second thing is B should be in a position to also certify that I have actually sent the message and nobody else on my behalf and the third thing is the message I sent exactly as reached B without any change, right and this should be possible at any point of time. And this is where these four points namely confidentiality, authentication, message integrity, access and availability means. Now <coughs> in a network when two people are trying to communicate, they are friends 
and there are people who are who want to intercept and understand what they are communicating and we call them enemies. So, in the literature of cryptography this Alice and Bob are always friends and there will be a Trudy who is always an interceptor. So, the, the image that you see on the screen is as follows. So, there is an Alice who wants to send a message to Bob right and they send it they, 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 they have a secure sender meaning they encrypt it a secure receiver which decrypts it. So, the data is sent, but there is a Trudy who is sitting in between who just gets whatever is sent and try to interpret what is sent. sent. So, the Trudy is basically an interceptor trying to understand what Bob is allies is allies and Bob are trying to communicate with each other. Okay. Now, Trudy is the intruder he may intercept what the Trudy can do it need not just understand what the message is maybe it is not even interested in understanding that message you can just basically intercept and delete the message or it can add some new message on behalf of uh, Alice. So, so interceptor is not one who is always interested in understanding what A is communicating with B it, so that is one way of attacking the system but the interceptor can be one who can basically go and <coughs> uh, and just delete the message do not allow any message from allies to go to Bob that sometimes we call it as denial of service right or it can also say that it will add some more message and saying hey I am allies and it can send some message to cheat Bob. So, so this is an, another way of thinking. So, so, so in, a, in, in today's network we have friends who want to communicate between each other and there are enemies who want to intercept this and do not just understand what they are communicating, but do many more things like uh, just dropping that message pulling out that message or adding new messages. So, who are this Bob and Alice are always they are all human beings or there can be something else. So, that is a very important question many many times this Bob and Alice are actually systems or processes that are running in systems. What is a process? Process is nothing but a program in execution I have covered this in information security level 2 course architecture related to information security a process is nothing but a program in execution ok. So, the processes here can be Bob and Alice right. So, a web browser or a ser web server for any electronic transaction or online purchase can act as a Bob and a uh, Alice. So, the so I have a web interface I type something he is Bob and or allies and he is sending a message to the other person would be a web server who is capturing this message and doing certain action right. So, a web browser and a server can are good examples of Bob and allies uh, and both of them are basically uh, not really human ok. For example, if you look at online banking the client and server they are again uh, Bob and allies. You have something called DNS servers which basically resolves the name this is domain name server service and then here there can be somebody who some other server which is requesting or some other uh, interface network interface which is requesting for a particular name. So, both the both the end need not be human beings. Similarly, there can be multiple routers on the internet they may be exchanging some routing table if some route has expired. So, just delete it. So, some routing table related updates these two routers will be exchanging and that is also an example of uh, Bob and Alice. You can think of many many examples where there are no human beings, but uh, there are processes basically program in execution that are basically trying to communicate over a network and they want that uh, that communication to be secure. You can think of many other examples also I have given you some 5 examples you can think of more examples and I want an active participation in the web uh, in the in the discussion forum on what could be possible Bob and Alice right. So, I want the team to start discussing on this ok. Now, we have Bob and Alice need not be really human beings they could be processes which are program in execution running on two different systems. Now, there are bad guys girls out there who will be intercepting this message and what can they do what do you mean by intercepting? They can do many things. So, let me just give you say some 5 uh, interesting things. First thing is eavesdrop I will just intercept the message what I do with this is next, but I intercept it. 
another thing is I can actively insert messages into the connection, new messages can go there and while doing this I can also impersonate, this is called spoofing or what you call fake, fake the source address in the packet. So, when Alice is communicating to Bob, the Trudy can become an Alice and send some message to Bob, Bob will think oh Alice is sending and he will start responding and then we can land up in problem. Hijacking, hijacking is take over ongoing connection by removing sender or receiver, inserting himself in place, right. So, Bob is trying to communicate with allies, just remove Bob and put yourself and start acting as Bob. So, allies will start communicating with you as if you are Bob, but you are actually an intruder and the real Bob will think that oh allies has just left the session and he will log out and go. So, somewhere this is called hijacking. Another thing is denial of service, just drop the packet, so Bob, no, no packet from Bob will reach Alice and vice versa. So, there are 5 interesting or important things, not necessarily interesting, but really scary things that a, uh, that a bad guy can do, a true D can do, eavesdrop, insert new package, impersonate on some, hijack somebody and do a denial of service. We will see many more things as we proceed in this course. Why are we talking of these things because these are very very important for us to basically understand how we can do a network forensic down the line. Now, how does, so let us go back to the first issue of confidentiality, how does Bob and Alice communicate with each other assuming a open network where many people can get the communication, but only the intended party can decrypt it or understand what the communication is. So, this is the real problem. That is the first problem that we had talked of namely confidentiality. So, there are, so the language of cryptography gives you two types of ways by which and which we can handle it. Absolutely the only, the one something that is common between these two ways is that when I start communicating, when Bob starts communicating they have to encrypt it, encrypt the message, use an encryption algorithm for doing this. And then what happens when uh, when allies start communicating in the slide, it gets encrypted, when Bob receives it, he decrypts it. So, decryption and encryption are same for both uh, the two types of uh, uh, cryptography that we are going to introduce namely symmetric key cryptography and public key cryptography. Both the symmetric key and the public key cryptography assumes that when Bob, sen, uh, Bob or allies sent a message to the other person, they sent it basically. Uh, using encrypting it on one end and decrypting on the receiving end, encrypting on the sending end and decrypting on the receiving end. So, a plain text is given to the encryption algorithm, it gets encrypted, that encrypted thing is called cipher text, that cipher text is not decipherable by anybody and then at the end uh, the entire thing is decrypted and again uh, the other party, intended party gets the plain text, okay. So, now what is important for the encryption and decryption algorithm? You need something called a key. So, you encrypt using a key and you decrypt using another key, these two keys have to be compatible. So, if I use a key K for K A for encryption by Alice, Bob will use a K B for uh, decryption uh, for the same message and this K A and K B must have something in common. Right. If K A is equal to K B, then this is called symmetric key cryptography. If K A is not equal to K B, right, then it is called asymmetric key cryptography. And one part of this asymmetric key is called public key cryptography, wherein the encryption key is public. Everybody can know the encryption key, while the decryption key is secret or private. In the case of symmetric key, both the encryption key as you see in this slide, K A and K B are both private, that is what will happen in symmetric key and where K A is also equal to K B. So, you will have only one key which Bob will know and allies will know and they will decrypt. But on the other hand, a public key cryptography is K A will be known to the entire world, K B will be known only to Bob, okay. So, this is called public key cryptography. Now, we will understand the symmetric key and public key cryptography, uh, the implementation part, we are not going into the algorithms, algorithms you will learn it in a uh, crypto course, 
but we will just go into the implementation part, understand how this system works and that is what we will take forward.